Thank you, Jules, for the kind introduction. Uh, a, bit, a bit long, though. <laughs> but, uh, well, anyway, uh, as Jules have uh, present, uh, mentioned, uh, the, I, the uh, purpose of this presentation is uh, to discuss uh, development and research issues as well as uh, implications uh, for agriculture uh, and rural development. So, uh, I've crafted this presentation to focus on small-scale fisheries. And I'm also mindful that there will be another presentation next week on uh, integrating uh, biodiversity conservation on uh, fisheries manage on ecosystem fisheries management. So uh, I uh, prepared this presentation to complement that uh, presentation next week. So, uh, medyo, uh, on behalf of Dr. Perry Alinio, I'm also uh, uh, already uh, requesting you to attend that uh, that presentation. So uh, to start with, uh, in this caricature, uh, my presentation would be mainly uh, looking at uh, livelihood and food security implications uh, of uh, fisheries uh, as a vehicle for development, as well as uh, I will touch a little bit on uh, uh, its uh, the implications on uh, species status as well as, well as ecosystem uh, services and functions. But uh, this talk would be mainly uh, focus on uh, the role of fisheries on livelihood and food security. And uh, as, as in the introduction, I've been uh, working on Southeast Asia, but I, will, uh, I have made the presentation more focused on the Philippines to make it relevant to the, to the, uh, to the audience. So I uh, divided the presentation into three. Uh, I'll, uh, firstly, I will talk on uh, some background information on the Philippine fisheries. Uh, in terms of production and uh, its importance to, uh, the de to development. And then uh, moving on to uh, the biophysical and socioeconomic characteristics, uh, focus on small-scale fisheries in the Philippines. And then uh, some thoughts on uh, uh, way moving forward in terms of uh, fisheries management and uh, some uh, proposed strategies. So, uh, uh, as you may know already, uh, the Philippines has a very expansive, uh, exclusive economic zone with an estimated of 2.2 million square kilometers. And uh, of that, uh, 266,000 square kilometers are uh, coastal and uh, around 1.9 uh, square million square kilometers uh, oceanic or uh, marine. Uh, of, the, uh, of this EZ, uh, around uh, 184,000 uh, square kilometers are uh, in the shelf area, which is usually the most productive area in, uh, in terms of uh, fishery resources. And uh, the coral reefs are also uh, within this uh, shelf area with an area of uh, 27,000 square kilometers. But uh, I think uh, in, the, in the next week presentation, uh, Dr. Alinio will be giving you uh, the status of uh, the coral reef resources and uh, relevance for uh, mar marine biodiversity conservation. So I will, uh, I will not uh, give an, uh, a background on the coral reef area, but uh, I would like to emphasize that our coral reef areas are also uh, important uh, fishing grounds, uh, especially for uh, reef uh, fishes like snapper and groupers. And uh, we have a very long uh, coastline with uh, around 36,000 kilometers. In terms of fisheries production, uh, between uh, 1980 to 2009, uh, the production increased from uh, around uh, 2 million metric tons and doubled to about uh, 5 million metric tons. And uh, however, uh, between 98 to 2000, uh, in 2004, the annual uh, growth rate uh, have uh, decreased from uh, around 9% uh, to almost uh, only 2.5% uh, in uh, 2009. So uh, it's uh, on the gross, it's uh, increasing or leveling off. The more, the more uh, scary thing here is that uh, uh, the, the growth rate has uh, been decreasing since 2004. In terms of uh, contribution or the subsectors, uh, almost 50% is uh, uh, contributed by aquaculture. And uh, the other uh, half is uh, uh, almost half also of uh, municipal fisheries for the, uh, around 26% and another 25% another for the commercial. I would like to just emphasize that uh, around 50 to 60% of this aquaculture 
is mainly from uh, seaweeds and they are not for food it's for uh, other purposes so it's a bit big in aquaculture production in the philippines but this is bulkly uh, seaweeds and uh, it's uh, has implication on uh, food security if we look at our uh, our uh, our fisheries production against the uh, consumption uh, locally and also the uh, requirement for uh, the growing population uh, in, in terms of the trends of the subsector, uh, for commercial, uh, it's uh, from between 1999 to 2009, it's uh, around uh, less than uh, 900,000 uh, metric tons to around uh, one point, um, more than 1.2 met, uh, million metric tons in 2009. But uh, you would see that uh, in, since 2007, uh, there's also a, a drop in terms of the growth, growth rate. Uh, similarly, for uh, for municipal fisheries, uh, it's also uh, have increased uh, from 1999 to uh, 2009, but uh, the growth rate is also decreasing since uh, around 2005 or 2006. In the case of aquaculture, uh, the growth rate has also been decreasing in 2004, and the, that decrease in uh, 2004 uh, since 2004 might be. Uh, influencing the, the gross uh, decrease in the aquaculture production uh, in the in terms of growth rate uh, for the Philippines but as I said earlier the total gross production still is uh, increasing trend uh, I just would like to uh, to show you the production uh, uh, growth rates for uh, for the three uh, I would say charismatic species because these three charismatic species are uh, the galunggong, tilapia, and bangus. Uh, tilapia is now the only fish that's, I think, uh, uh, be, uh, below 100 pesos a kilo. And then uh, bangus and galunggong are, I think, more than 100 pesos a kilo now. So uh, what's shown in this fish, and uh, tilapia and bangus are the number two, uh, the first and second uh, aquaculture species uh, in the Philippines and uh, tilapia now is number one and bangus is number two and then for, for galunggong it's the number one species from capture fisheries where municipal or small-scale fisheries are, uh, are targeting so uh, it, it has been increasing uh, up to 203 or 204 but uh, it's now uh, the stocks are now a bit uh, dwindling and uh, it might uh, uh, continue on a down, downward trend if fisheries management is not uh, being uh, 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 improved in most coastal areas or fishing grounds. Uh, this is a, this table is a bit uh, 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 how would they say, say it heavy, but uh, the, the main message here is that. Uh, the average uh, per capita fish uh, consumption is around uh, 35 or 36 uh, kg per caput per year, and uh, the uh, and, uh, percentage of fish uh, in terms of uh, the meat and poultry combined is that 56%, uh, and uh, the percentage of fish in terms of the total food consumption is around 11%. Uh, but uh, the other uh, message in this uh, table is that uh, there is a uh, regional or geographical uh, differences in terms of uh, uh, fish consumption wherein uh, in some regions it would be higher uh, especially the the Visayas and Mindanao area and a bit lower especially for uh, the uh, landlocked uh, regions like uh, CAR which is only 20, 21.53 kilogram per capita per year so in terms of uh, food security or uh, uh, in terms of uh, Contribution of fisheries to uh, food security, it's a bit, uh, uh, it's being apparent now already in this, uh, in this uh, table. And I will uh, give you some more details uh, in the second part of the presentation. Uh, this is uh, data from the BIFAR. Uh, these are the trends in terms of uh, the, the total fisheries production. Uh, it's estimated last year that uh, it's the production already is already 5.4. But as, as I mentioned earlier, not, not all the production in terms of aquaculture are uh, food fish, so they have corrected it in terms of uh, the fish production that is available for, uh, for food. So it's uh, 3.8 uh, million metric tons. And then uh, you less the export and import. So uh, the available uh, 
uh, fish is uh, around 3.8 uh, 3 uh, million metric tons. And with a population of uh, 93 million, you divide the, uh, the average, uh, which is uh, already around 36 uh, kilogram per capita per year, we have still uh, a surplus of around 465,852,000 uh, metric tons. But the problem here is that if the, the population will keep on growing, then the food supply in terms of fish uh, might be uh, problematic in the next 10 or 20 years. Secondly, is that uh, as we see here, there's a, uh, a surplus. We might look at how the fish distribution are being carried out at the moment because we are an archipelagic country. Maybe uh, we should look at uh, establishing a more uh, reliable and uh, more link, uh, link in terms of the, the rural markets to, to the urban areas. Because uh, if these 465 million metric tons are wasted and uh, not uh, uh, used for uh, uh, food for, uh, for the people, then I think that would be a waste in terms of our production. So, uh, uh, as I have described already the production trends, the importance in terms of uh, uh, food uh, security, but uh, fisheries are also important in terms of development, uh, contribution to GDP and uh, GBA, as well as uh, we are still uh, uh, positive in terms of our balance of trade, wherein uh, our uh, fishery exports in terms of value are more than uh, the imported uh, value of uh, fish, although the imported value of fish are uh, in terms of uh, 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 volume is uh, a bit higher, but their value is, uh, is lower. So uh, in, this, in, this thing, in this graph, it uh, shows that uh, we're still uh, positive in terms of uh, balance of trade. So in terms of uh, contribution of fisheries to, uh, to development, we are also, uh, the fish is also important in terms of uh, getting uh, foreign exchange earnings for the country and, uh, and because of uh, our production. Uh, I would just also would like to mention as uh, in my topic that uh, in terms of employment, the municipal fishery sector is around uh, 1.3 million uh, uh, small scale fishers, which I'll uh, describe in the second part of this presentation. Okay, so uh, we are focusing on small-scale fisheries, uh, especially in the, in, uh, for World Fish, which is also uh, an international research center on rural development. And uh, we would like to uh, focus our efforts in terms of uh, the, uh, the 1.3 million uh, small-scale fishers. And uh, there are uh, in, Southeast, in, in Asia, there's an estimated uh, 37 million uh, uh, small-scale fishers in the region. So uh, as a definition from the FAO, uh, small-scale fisheries can be broadly characterized as a dynamic and evolving sector employing uh, labor-intensive harvesting, processing, and distribution technologies to exploit marine and inland water fishery resources. Uh, for this presentation, I'm not uh, covering inland fisheries, but uh, it's one of the also subsector right now that's being overlooked in terms of uh, the national fisheries development uh, in the Philippines. So we, we have sparsely, uh, sparse data on that one. So most of the presentation that I'll be giving in terms of characteristics of uh, small-scale fisheries would be mainly on the coastal and marine areas. So uh, uh, in addition to uh, the definition of FAO to, uh, to the small-scale fisheries, uh, this subsector is also uh, not homogeneous within and across the countries and regions. And uh, attention, attention to this fact is warranted when formulating strategies and policies for enhancing its contribution to food security and poverty alleviation. So uh, I'll, try, I'll also try to show you the, the heterogeneous uh, characteristic of small-scale fisheries in the Philippines uh, in this second part of the presentation. So uh, just to compare, uh, in terms of definition, for the Philippines, uh, we usually uh, call small scale for the, the municipal uh, fisheries, which uh, uses both less than three gross tons and operates uh, uh, within 15 kilometers as mandated by the uh, RA550 fisheries code. And commercial uh, fisheries sector are uh, use boats uh, greater than three gross tons and uh, operates beyond 15 kilometers. Uh, 
I will not go into the detail, but uh, more or less uh, in, in some uh, countries in the region, our neighbors, uh, they also uh, have uh, a definition in terms of what is their small-scale fishery are and also what's their large-scale fishery are. And more or less, uh, we have similarity, but in terms of management, uh, we are very different. So small-scale fisheries are basically uh, from various villages, very, very dispersed. They use uh, small boats, as uh, I have, uh, I have uh, presented in the table. They are uh, targeting uh, multi-species, and they are using uh, multi-gear uh, multi uh, fisheries. And, uh, as opposed to large-scale fisheries, they are usually uh, from, uh, say, an urban area. Uh, they are fewer in terms of number. They uh, also, uh, and, some, and most of the time, uh, target a single species, for example, tuna. Uh, for the Philippines, uh, I have presented this already, so I won't go uh, much in the detail, but uh, again, uh, in terms of uh, proportion of the captured fisheries, it's all, almost 50-50 uh, between uh, the municipal and the commercial fisheries. In terms of number of fishers, uh, as I presented earlier, uh, for small scale, for municipal, there are 1.37 million uh, fishers, as compared to around uh, 242 only for uh, for the commercial. So, in terms of boats, uh, there are 469 uh, uh, thousand bankas, and uh, around 62 percent of which are uh, non-motorized. And uh, this is something uh, for the policymakers. Uh, the small-scale fisheries or the municipal fisheries uh, operates mainly on 12% uh, of the EEZ. As compared to the, to the commercial fishers, they have uh, a playground of around 88% of the total uh, EEZ. So, medyo may disparity in terms of the access rights. But uh, that's how the R8550 is written. So, uh, uh, just some uh, some data sets uh, to back up the table. So, uh, as I said, there are 62% uh, non-motorized, but uh, you would see that there's also uh, some uh, geographic uh, differences. In terms of catch rates, uh, it's uh, the range would be something like around uh, 2.5 to around 22 uh, kilograms per day per boat but an, an, over, an average of uh, 7.6 uh, kilos uh, per boat per day. But uh, based on our uh, uh, surveys in uh, different uh, small-scale fisheries areas, like uh, in Calamianes Islands and uh, also in Buhol, the catch rates of uh, gill netters and uh, hook and liners are only ranging between uh, 2 to 5 kilos per day. And they only have one uh, fishing trip per day. So uh, this might be uh, more computed in terms of the official statistics of uh, the BFAR. Uh, in terms of uh, species composition of uh, the cuts of uh, muni uh, municipal uh, and commercial sectors, uh, I'll focus on the municipal. As I have uh, emphasized earlier, uh, round scuds or galunggong uh, comprise 6.6% um, uh, of the, the cuts of uh, municipal fishers. And uh, they usually employ uh, gill nets and, uh, and uh, hook and lines and, uh, or simple uh, gears. So, uh, and uh, some, of, uh, some other species are sardines, uh, tuna, your uh, uh, big-eyed scuds, uh, Indian mackerel, ito yung hasa-hasa or uh, uh, yun yata yung, uh, yung, ano, yung uh, kanyang local name. In terms of uh, fishing ground uh, of municipal uh, fish cuts, uh, the trend uh, between 1995 and 2002, uh, although we noted around uh, an increase, we are now uh, looking. Uh, look, uh, we have data sets for in uh, Leyte Gulf, uh, Western Palawan waters, uh, Lamon Bay, Summer Sea, and the Double Gulf are. Uh, have decreased in terms of uh, the total catch uh, from uh, municipal fisheries. And based on uh, the National Stock Assessment Program, uh, this is a more, uh, more rigorous analysis. Uh, those, the, those areas are uh, the well-studied areas wherein they have uh, time series uh, catch and effort data since 1998. So uh, 
most of the the fishing grounds in uh, the Visayas area, except for this uh, the, the the areas in Camiguin and uh, Makalahar Bay, are already highly fished. Meaning, the fishes there already are uh, overfished, and most of the uh, fishing operation are municipal in nature. And so. Uh, that confirms the, uh, the statistics from BIFAR. This is coming from uh, more uh, intensive surveys in terms of catch and effort data of the National Stock Assessment Program. So, uh, in short, uh, the resources wherein the municipal fisheries or small-scale fisheries are uh, operating are already overfished. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, these are the uh, uh, drift gill net are, uh, and hook and line are the major uh, fishing uh, gears used by, uh, by municipal fishers or small scale fishers. And, uh, but I would like to note that uh, there are uh, plenty of uh, other uh, fishing uh, methods or gear that's being used uh, in the municipal or small scale, small scale fishery sector. In a study we conducted in San Miguel Bay, we look at uh, we we also did some uh, uh, species composition uh, analysis of various gears. So uh, they also they, this one is uh, a gill net. This, uh, these two are uh, doing hook and line, and this is uh, a, a, an operation of a, of a trawler. So we try to look at the the overlap in terms of species composition of the gears, and uh, we we noted that. Uh, the gill nets and the, uh, the, the trolls and also fish coral and fil filter net are mainly uh, have uh, more or more or less the same fish cuts composition. These ring nets and gill nets are operating more offshore wherein uh, the ring net uh, targets the, uh, the other stock of uh, round scud and uh, sardines. The gill nets and the lines are uh, more targeting on uh, tunas and uh, shark. So, ang um, message ko dito, uh, although, uh, uh, although they use different types of gear, uh, there is a very high similarity of catch composition of the various gears being used uh, by the small scale or municipal fishery sector. And most often than not, their catch composition are almost the same for the other commercial sector like the trawlers. This is in San Miguel Bay. So uh, just uh, to uh, to back up the other uh, the the multi-dimensional scaling uh, result. So these are the groups that are um, uh, uh, having the same uh, catch rates, uh, catch composition in terms of species, and these are the more offshore ones. Uh, these are the ring net, the uh, the pamating, and the longline. Uh, moving on to uh, marketing aspect. Uh, this is also again in San Miguel Bay. So, uh, in terms of uh, lo local food security, uh, we noted that uh, the, the, the fishes that are caught within San Miguel Bay are 95% uh, of that are sold locally or transported in nearby provinces, and 5% uh, of that uh, catch is consumed by uh, the fishers uh, at home or in, the, in, the area, in their uh, area. Uh, also, some uh, socioeconomic characteristics uh, for uh, for the municipal fishers. Uh, they usually uh, are aged between uh, 25 to 50, but uh, bulk of them are uh, in the middle age, between uh, 30 to 40 years old. And uh, the the fisheries are mainly uh, at the moment uh, dominated by male, with 97% uh, are uh, are engaged in uh, fisheries. In terms of uh, educational uh, level of uh, the fishers, uh, they are mainly uh, either uh, high school graduate or uh, elementary graduate. Uh, I got this from uh, the National uh, Statistics Coordination Board and uh, it's a uh, Sad to note that uh, fish, uh, fishers are uh, one of the sectors that have uh, highest incidence of poverty uh, in the other sectors, uh, including farmers, and uh, it's 46% uh, uh, in 2006. 
uh, where are these uh, uh, the, the features from Caraga, ARMM, and uh, Region 5 were uh, noted to be uh, the poorest, uh, uh, and uh, the, high, the highest incidence was 66.7%. Uh, so, ang um, sinasabi dito, uh, features are uh, based on 206 uh, survey, they are the poorest of the poor uh, as, a sec as a sector. And if uh, there are if there are 1.9, uh, 1.3 uh, million uh, small-scale fishers, then uh, most of them are poor. In terms of geographic, uh, again, uh, just to uh, back up that table, uh, they are uh, in the ARMM area, the Caraga area, and uh, Region 5. And uh, uh, I, I, we need to check this if uh, Mundoro and Palawan are also included, but uh, the Visayas area are, uh, I think, uh, especially mas bate area uh, valid okay so uh, in terms of uh, achieving the uh, millennium development goal number one in terms of eradicating poverty and hunger wherein the Philippines uh, have a 20 percent uh, share in terms of uh, the uh, population living in uh, less than 1.25 uh, dollar per day uh, and also uh, the high pre uh, the, the prevalence of malnutrition. So, uh, in terms of fisheries, I think uh, uh, it would be an entry point for uh, improving the management of small scale fisheries to be able to uh, uh, addressing uh, or eradicating poverty, especially for the fishers which are considered uh, poorest of the poor. So, that's why we are focusing on small scale fisheries for the Philippines. So, uh, any, so question on why target small scale fishers? So uh, there would be a significant entry point for MDG uh, million uh, milestone. Uh, also, fisheries in Southeast Asia, including the Philippines, are also a self-sustaining fish production uh, producing sector. And uh, based on the study of Delgado of 2003, uh, he, uh, they predicted that uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, would produce 1 million tons for fish beyond consumption levels and uh, to feed the people. But uh, as I showed in the gra in a table earlier for the Philippines, we are still uh, have a surplus uh, fish production, but if the, the population will continue uh, to grow uh, at the rate we are, are now, then uh, I think uh, in 2020 it might be, uh, we might be experiencing a fish deficit country. However, as I, uh, uh, as I described in terms of their characteristics in the biophysical uh, and also socioeconomic uh, uh, characteristics earlier, there are, I think, uh, too many fishers uh, already catching too few fish. And uh, the problem really uh, is centered on uh, the governance or the management. So uh, I think uh, this has been uh, already uh, documented in many uh, uh, many research articles, uh, but I would like to emphasize that uh, with all this resource depletion and uh, habitat degradation and uh, loss of biodiversity, there, there are already increasing uh, resources conflicts because of governance failure. And on top of that, uh, uh, I think there, there might have been uh, a climate change uh, presentation in ADSS before already, but uh, this is already occurring. Uh, and uh, we cannot deny that uh, there's no effect of climate change in, uh, in the Philippines. Data shows uh, and projection shows uh, there are already uh, signs of uh, increasing temperature, uh, increasing intensity of typhoons, etc., and other disasters. So uh, if this, per this uh, other issues persist uh, overlaid by the climate change and I think uh, it would be really a disaster in terms of uh, food uh, production from fisheries sector. So uh, uh, we have been uh, diagnosing uh, what's happening on, uh, on our uh, small scale fisheries and uh, we have zeroed in on uh, governance uh, failures or uh, their limitations in spite of many national plans uh, many national projects and also uh, local and NGO-led initiatives. I just would like to go through uh, some of the plans and programs uh, for uh, your information, but uh, I will not already uh, deal main, uh, on the, in the issues or problems which I think uh, I have already uh, touched in the previous uh, 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 
part of that talk. So uh, in terms of legislation, uh, we have the RA 550, otherwise known as Fisheries Code, uh, passed in 1998. This is um, mainly uh, mandating the, uh, the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources uh, in coordination with the LGUs to manage the coastal and marine uh, resources. And then we have the uh, Local Government Code uh, of 1991, which mandates the, the LGUs to manage the municipal waters. And in 1997, we have the uh, uh, Agriculture uh, Fish and Fisheries Modernization Act which uh, recognizes the importance of fisheries to food security and provides for uh, integrated coastal management training. Uh, in the departmental level, uh, there are also uh, EO241 that creates uh, fisheries and aquatic resources management councils. Uh, and then FOO217 in terms of uh, adoption and implementation of uh, the integrated fisheries management units. Uh, another FOO in terms of implementation of the Comprehensive National Fisheries uh, Industry Development Plan and uh, there's an EO533 uh, with DNR in terms of uh, implementing integrated coastal management. Then uh, let us just be mindful that we have also uh, been signatory or uh, part of a uh, regional and inter international uh, consensus or instrument like uh, the resolution or plan of action for uh, sustainable, sustainable fisheries for food security in the ASEAN region, uh, the regional guidelines for responsible fisheries, the uh, strategic plan of action uh, for ASEAN cooperation in fisheries, and also uh, the R RPOA on IUU fishing, and uh, also uh, several programs that, that are ongoing right now like the Coral Triangle Initiative. Then, uh, in terms of BIFAR and LGU interventions, uh, uh, LGU, I think, uh, are trying very hard, as well as BIFAR, to improve the licensing and permit system. Uh, there has been uh, a lot of uh, efforts in terms of uh, establishing marine protected areas, fish sanctuaries, and refugia. There were also uh, already uh, efforts in terms of uh, closing or uh, clo close season for species, as well as area and uh, restric restricting fishing methods like a uh, troll ban in, uh, in San Miguel Bay and other uh, enclosed bays in the Philippines. Uh, the last point though is that uh, these are some, uh, these are, uh, F these are uh, measures that were uh, adopted from the Western world which I think are not implementable in the case of the Philippines like uh, uh, the allowable catch levels or quotas and size limits because uh, in the case of uh, small-scale fisheries, which is very the very, uh, dispersed and uh, many players, then uh, the policing of that or uh, regulating of that might be uh, or would be problematic, and uh, uh, I think monitoring of uh, efforts would be uh, not uh, possible. Also, uh, in terms of uh, jurisdictional uh, uh, jurisdiction of uh, BFAR and uh, the local government units. So you, your, the LGUs are mainly uh, uh, managing small-scale fisheries uh, from the province to the village level. And then uh, BIFAR, uh, uh, BIFAR has regional offices, but they, are, they don't have offices already at the province and municipality level. So it's an issue wherein uh, even if there is uh, R8550 uh, that uh, BIFAR should implement, its interaction with the local government units uh, is very uh, important. And there, there is a need to... Uh, to link this, uh, link the, the nine agencies of government and the local government units. And I'll give you a, a caricature on how, what's happening on the ground. So based on R8550, uh, commercial fishers should be uh, operating beyond 15 kilometers and uh, the municipal uh, fisheries would be oper uh, operates uh, within 15 kilometers. And there are different LGUs. This is the ideal setup. The other modality is that uh, some LGUs are treating their municipal waters as, as their uh, own waters. So they do not allow uh, other LGUs to go there, uh, fishers from other LGUs to go there and fish. As well as uh, they also very strict in terms of uh, commercial fishers coming, coming in. But we should note that uh, fishers uh, travel 
horizontally or vertically uh, and uh, doesn't know uh, the uh, jurisdictional uh, areas for LGUs as well as uh, whether it's there within 15 kilometers or beyond 15 kilometers. But this is how, what's, how it's implemented on the ground. Uh, for some LGUs that uh, would like to uh, increase their revenue, uh, it's part of RA550 wherein they allow the, uh, the commercial fishers to uh, operate within uh, between 10 to 15 kilometers. So they allow commercial fishers and then exploit the, uh, the resources here that will uh, and I think that, that gives some uh, in terms of access for the municipal fishers to have uh, a lesser uh, area of operation. So, yung tatlong modalities na yon, uh, uh, are implemented, uh, are, are being done on the ground and uh, it varies from one LGU to the other and uh, I think that is one area wherein uh, uh, we are proposing to look at uh, an, uh, scaling up of uh, fisheries management which I'll, uh, I'm now uh, going through in the uh, last part of this presentation. Uh, how I'm doing the, the time? Ten more minutes, okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, this is a, 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 a summary of a study we conducted uh, in 2005 and 2006 uh, on look at, looking at uh, conflicts in fisheries and their, uh, in, uh, their, their uh, uh, implications on, uh, uh, national, uh, on uh, food security as well as livelihood. So uh, as I showed earlier, uh, the caricature, those... Uh, uh, those problems in terms of uh, managing the fisheries uh, has an implication in terms of uh, increasing uh, resource use conflicts which lead to uh, uh, problems in terms of food security, uh, environmental degradation in terms in including uh, overfishing and uh, also uh, loss of income. And uh, in some cases, and this is uh, already documented in the Visayansi area and also in other areas wherein Law enforcement teams are uh, being killed because of they, uh, the, uh, the commercial fishers or the fishers would uh, retaliate to this uh, bantay dagat or the law enforcement teams. So uh, uh, because of uh, the, uh, the problems in terms of resources conflicts, these are uh, some of the implications of that and uh, these are the natures of the conflicts from uh, disputes in, in terms of access right. Uh, from conflict on in who, who should control the fisheries or enforcement. Uh, type number three is uh, usually uh, documented wherein, uh, as I showed in the caricature earlier, it's a conflict between the municipal or small-scale fisheries and the commercial fishers wherein uh, it's uh, because of that 15-kilometer uh, uh, fishing line. Okay, so... Uh, I have described uh, some of the programs and initiatives. Uh, so uh, what we are uh, proposing is that uh, maybe uh, in terms of strategies, we would have some uh, measure in terms of uh, sustaining and preserving the resources or protecting the resources, capacitating uh, the LGUs or uh, integrating the different management units, and uh, pursuing some uh, information and education campaign. And I'll go through some of the details of this uh, in, the, uh, in the next uh, five or six slides. So in terms of uh, sustaining, uh, we would need to improve uh, municip municipal fisheries uh, registration and licensing. We also need to uh, harmonize uh, re relevant policies and regulations, and uh, as well as uh, minimizing uh, the post-harvest losses. Second is, uh, in terms of protect and preserve, we need to rehabilitate uh, degraded fisheries habitats and ecosystem. And uh, I think uh, the, uh, the establishment of uh, marine protected areas uh, to increase the number or enhance the networks uh, will be presented uh, next week uh, in the eco uh, EBFM concept. But uh, in terms of fisheries, uh, there are also uh, some fish sanctuaries that being uh, uh, established already that are uh, uh, you cannot do some fishing in that particular uh, fish sanctuary or marine protected area. We also need to enhance uh, fish, fisheries to enforcement. There are bantay dagats on the ground but uh, they are uh, minimally funded by the LGU to the tune of less than 200,000 pesos uh, a year in terms of their uh, enforcement uh, uh, activities. So just imagine 200,000 for doing law enforcement uh, 
and uh, they cannot do that in a, in a daily basis. And then, uh, and also we need to, uh, in terms of protect and preserve, uh, as part of the marine protected area, we need to protect uh, the biodiversity. In terms of developing uh, the sector, uh, we need to promote sustainable fisheries uh, livelihoods, uh, improve uh, product along the value chain, uh, establish appropriate uh, infrastructure facilities including post-harvest and fish processing. We also need to uh, use market-based incentives. Uh, at, at the moment, there are now uh, discussion in terms of uh, implementing payment of ecosystem services, which could be applied also in the fisheries sector. Uh, this, uh, this next bullet I am a bit uh, adamant in terms of proposing because uh, as, I, as I maybe know already, uh, there are limited, uh, less explo exploited fishing grounds in the Philippines, but uh, maybe we could still uh, look for uh, less exploited uh, fishing areas if there are. And more uh, lastly uh, is to link small scale fisheries with the other economic sectors via the implementation of the ecosystem approach uh, to fisheries. Then, uh, to, uh, uh, under the capacitate and integrate, uh, we, uh, we are, uh, would like to propose a continued uh, capacity building for uh, LGUs. We also need to promote uh, organizational integration. Uh, for example, alliances, uh, baywide management councils. There are already existing good examples of this. Uh, in various areas, like in the Lingayan Gulf area, there's an alliance of uh, uh, Bulinao, Alaminos, uh, Bani, and uh, uh, there's another town wherein they are already collectively uh, doing that. Uh, there's also one uh, alliance in the uh, Lanusa Bay area in Caraga, and uh, I think there are several uh, working uh, alliances or uh, baywide man management councils uh, already. And then, uh, in terms of uh, implementing the FOO in, term, in uh, integrated fisheries management unit, uh, we need to. Uh, this would be uh, towards uh, scaling up fisheries management, as I have also uh, explained earlier. That uh, managing the fisheries uh, uh, as per 8550 uh, with the LGUs and uh, BFAR uh, is not working in uh, in most areas. And of course, uh, we need uh, partnerships uh, in, ter in in the. Uh, in improving the management uh, of uh, small-scale fisheries. So this is just uh, still a, a work on uh, a work in progress, wherein uh, the concept of uh, the uh, implementation of integrated fisheries management unit. Uh, we hope uh, to convince uh, the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources to adopt this uh, sooner rather than later, with the involvement of the local government units. Uh, lastly, to communicate is uh, to implement a comprehensive education program, uh, maybe uh, also tapping through the formal education system. Second uh, is to design practical monitoring and evaluation system. Also, uh, clarification of property rights and communicating it to, uh, to the stakeholders. We also need to improve the fisheries data information system, where I think uh, there, there are already uh, gains on this uh, through the NFRDI, the National Fisheries Research and Development Institute of BIFAR, but I think there's still room for improvement. And then uh, also, uh, uh, when we look at uh, small-scale fisheries, there might be more uh, focus on uh, research on gender and uh, uh, translating the results of research uh, for, to other usable formats for information and education campaign. So uh, hopefully, if uh, the, uh, the the small scale fisheries would be uh, managed uh, properly, then uh, we would be able to uh, 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 obtain a sustainable harvest, uh, minimize post harvest losses, uh, rehabilitate and protect uh, fishery habitats, uh, improve the quality of uh, marine waters, in in including the fishery habitats, and then uh, limited or uh, minimal uh, resource use competition or conflicts, and uh, hopefully a decline in uh, poverty among uh, fishing livelihoods, and finally increasing contribution of fisheries to local and national economy. Uh, this picture was taken by my colleague uh, David Mills in uh, Africa, and I think uh, on a 
on, a, on an overview, uh, this might also be occurring in the Philippines, wherein uh, the, the small-scale fisheries are uh, very numerous, and uh, they are actually uh, uh, a part of a more broader, uh, uh, how would say, uh, activity in terms of uh, fish marketing, and then uh, these trucks will be bringing the fish to to the urban areas. So. Uh, to close, uh, I would say that uh, small-scale fisheries are are hard to measure because they are numerous, but uh, their importance to food security and livelihood is often uh, underestimated because they are not really uh, the statistics are not uh, really uh, there always. Uh, for I have given this to uh, to the secretariat. If you want to follow up some of the de the details of the presentation, is well, it was based mainly on uh, two projects that uh, I've been uh, involved at the World Fish Center, and some publications that uh, came out from from the uh, other projects that I was involved. So, uh, thank you very much for your kind attention.